Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the built-in elemental forms. Um, they are great for simple forms. Uh, you can make some quite complex stuff. They don't have uh, conditional logic, things like that, that you might want for more advanced forms. But for general forms, they're really, really good. They're really simple, um, and it's part of elemental, so you don't need any plugins or on. So they always a bonus. Now. The only issue I've had with the forms is the um, lack of support for required inputs uh, in feeding that back to the user. So I'll show you what I mean. If I grab a form, and I check it on the page here, if I look at that by default, it's told me that the email is required. Okay, but nothing in this form indicates that that email is a required field. So what you have to do is you go to settings and you tell it to show the required mark. Now it's showing me a little asterisk next to email, which is a fairly standard sort of thing. Uh, over in the styles, um, the only option that I can find that you've got here is what they call the mark color. So I can change that to whatever color I want. So I just change it to green. Now that indicator is green. That's pretty much all you can do with this that I can see. Uh, I might prove me wrong, but the um, fairly fairly limited feature. And let's say you come back to this field here, sorry, the form, and you don't want to show the label. So you hide the label. Now, no matter what you do with this here, you're not gonna see any required indicators. I'm gonna show you a way that I do this Demonstrate, I'm going to leave the name as not required. Leave the email as required. I'm going to make the message required. I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to call that uh, another message. Uh, and we're going to make that not required. So we've got a not required, required. I'll we'll change this around. We want, uh, we're going to go not required. Uh, this one's required. This message here is not required. This message here is required. Now, if I looked at this form on a website, there's no way I can tell which fields are required and which ones are not required. So the way I've done this is the using the custom CSS. So if I go to the CSS here, if I'm just going to bring up the uh, dev tools, I'm going to have a look at the uh, the way Elemental does this, I'm going to be using my um, uh, element selector in uh, Chrome DevTools. Just go to this input here. I can see I've got an input for that. Um, and I've got a, where are we? No required item on that. But if I have a look at the email, I've got an input. It's got required equals required. Okay, there's actually a CSS pseudo selector uh, for that, which is just colon required, and I'm going to show you how that works. So, if I go to my advanced custom CSS, I put in the keyword selector, target this form, uh, and then import, and I'm going to do colon required. Oops. Okay, let's say we put a border to the left of it. So I'm going to make the left border, so border left. And I'll make it say five pixels, solid, and make it orange. Okay, so now I can see this here. Have a look at this form. I can see my email has got a little orange bar next to it because it's required. But the message hasn't. Uh, now, the reason for that is there are different selectors. So let's have a look at this element here. So, uh, so that one's not required. This one is required. Have a look there. So we've actually got a text area here. We've still got that required uh, attributes there. So if I add a comma to this rule and put a selector, uh, Text area. Oh, required. 
Okay, so now my text area that is required has got that bar as well. I have a look at this page here. So I know that that is required and that is required and these ones aren't. Uh, so what I would typically do is actually grab a, um, just a text editor or a, or a heading. I'd stick that up the top there. And I'd put note, get rid of this bottom bar here. Note. Something like that. So now on my page here with my form, little note up the top, orange markers are required, means required input, names obviously not required, emails required, that message isn't required and this one is. If I hit send, it's gonna tell me to fill in that email field. So if I put me in there, hit send, it's gonna tell me to fill in this field here. So that's a way of doing, uh, sorry, feeding back to the user. Uh, which fields are required, uh, particularly if you want to hide the um, labels. So if I go back here and just, I can I can leave the labels there. If you want to hide the labels, which actually looks pretty good, uh, you can hide that and you can still tell which ones are required. So that's pretty much a method of doing this. If you want to add other elements, let's say, for example, it's a radio Okay, and we're going to put in a couple of tests, say test one, test one, test two, um, and don't need a label, I should just give a label, test, this radio, let's say that's required, again we're not going to get any markers there, so let's have a look at why that is. You need to check each of these and find out what CSS do you actually need. So this we've got input is required, uh, but we don't have a uh, marker on that for some reason. So it's probably because the left side is actually hidden. So let's have a look at what we'd need to do that. It's saying border left solid orange, um, but it's just not applying it. Uh, maybe we need some padding on that. Uh, maybe five pixels. No, it's still not giving it to us, so we might look at doing this differently. So we might actually select the target this one differently. So if we have a look further up this here, we see there's actually a fill group. Uh, where it says it's, it's a required field, so elemental field required. So what we could do is in there, we can go, let's have a look further down, subgroup. I'm just working this out as I go. So maybe we'll make that one the same as the other. So we'll make that five pixels. And we want to put a padding on that. Put a padding. Padding left of, say, five pixels. We get some marker away from that. All right, so what we're finding here is that we need to now target, to get these radios, show us that that's required. What we need to target is the form selector, so this widget here, so the form. Then we need to target the uh, da -da -da, elemental required field and then elemental field subgroup. So let's have a look at that. So if I click on there and go elemental required, take this into an OPAD document. And then we need the subgroup. Okay, so if I select that, 
I add that to my Gart CSS. So for the selector here, I'm going to add selector. And I'm going to add this here. I'm also going to target that cyber field required uh, elemental group just by itself and add some padding to it. So I'm going to select that. But that's what we want there. I'm going to put some padding left of five pixels. Give us a little bit of movement away from this. If I don't do that, it's right up against it. So if I make a copy of that radio group, be uh, that. Whoops. Duplicate that. I'm going to make this one not required. So we can now see the required one. Added some extra padding for some reason. I'm not sure what they why I did that. Why? Adding the 55 pixels. I still have a typo there. I have to. A typo 55. So that there, actually, I've just realized now we're going to have a step between the required and not required. So what I might do is take off this required indicator there and just make them all a padding of five. Um, now this one's still off because we've got the five pixels there. So we go, we might actually make another rule here. This is just tidying things up. Uh, and then uh, what do we want? Just try and figure this out. So do is go there. We're going the Elementor field subgroup field label field group on here field group okay so with the field group That's better. So we had to target the actual element, uh, use the not pseudo selector um, to exclude anything that's got the field required. So we can add some extra padding to allow for that five pixel margin, uh, five pixel uh, border on the side there. So there we go. I'll refresh that. And there we go. There's a there's a way of doing this where you can mark these as required and keep these all online. Okay. Hopefully that's useful for somebody. Thank you.